how to barter. Let's talk about this. If there is digital currency, the experts are saying that there will be massive layoffs and so many companies that go downhill. Now, the real question is if there is digital currency and we have money in the bank, what will happen to the money in the bank? Are they gonna match it with digital currency? Some say no. Some say the banks are gonna run with it and then they're gonna just give us a certain amount of digital currency. Well, the one thing that throughout history, and we're gonna talk about bartering, is bartering and people trading goods. And this keeps the government eyes out of our business with bartering. And it will happen for a while. I mean, if it really gets that bad, yeah, everything's gonna go down. But let's talk about bartering. And Paul and I have a little skit for you. So here you go. Sir, can I approach you? Sure, that's fine. What's your name? Lee. Okay. All right, Lee, come on in. Lee, I just want you to know something before yeah. you come in. Yeah. I've got a friend who was with an eye sight of me, not very far away. Mm -hmm. And just don't try anything funny or okay. things could go bad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sir, I would like to trade. I would like to trade with you. I'm in need of a bushcraft knife. Hmm. Need, I need a weapon okay. being out on the road like I am. Just one? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Or more if you have more. Well, I have one available for trade. Okay. What were you thinking? Well, let me let me show it. Okay. Okay. Oh. okay. It is actually a, a bushcraft knife. It's actually made in Sweden. So check that out and see if that would fit your needs. So he just handed me his knife. But I have a friend over here and he's watching everything and he has a So he's got a friend watching him over there and I have a friend watching him here. Well, she's going to examine that and I'm not really sure how much I'd like for that knife. It's it's probably in the old days, it was worth about $30, I think is what I paid for it. Today, if she really needs that, I'd like to get some silver, some 90% silver uh, from pre-1964 when money was really worth something. So that's what I'm going to ask for. We'll see what she comes up with. Well, yeah. Ooh, that's sharp. This will become dull pretty soon. Do you have a, a sharpener that I could trade also? No, I don't have a, a sharpener that I'd like to trade at this time. Okay. But you can sharpen that on a rock. Okay. You know, you don't have to have a fancy knife sharpener. You can just sharpen that again on a, on a rock if need be. Why did I approach him in the first place? Well, he looked like a nice guy. He wasn't going to hurt me. And there's a lot of undesirables out here. I just had a hunch. I just, I, I listened to my instincts and I had a hunch. Now, the scenario is... The real final shit hit the fan hasn't happened quite yet. But things are getting tough. I had more money in the bank than I wound up with. And of course, money, you know, it was the old greenback and its value has gone down and down and down, unfortunately. By the way, I know that people are already bartering. For instance, a truck farmer, a guy, a farmer that raises vegetables and so forth and so on, uh, on his little farm, has a little stand on the side of the highway I've heard that actually in 2023, there are farmers and others, I bet, that are actually bartering and use, using pre-1964 money to pay for those vegetables. So it's already happening in some places. Yeah, the world went digital 
And it was just about six months since it's happened. And bartering is happening everywhere. People are collecting what they have, taking inventory what they have, and trying to approach people that look honest that they can trade with. Now, they're not actually trading in marketplaces yet because we're all kind of being watched. There's cameras everywhere. So I thought I would approach this nice man and see. Now, my friend, Paul and I, he, he has his weapon on him. He can't see that, but he does. And he's watching. Now, we do not have a good bushcraft knife. We left, somebody stole it from us. So we needed one of these. And he happens to have one. He probably has other stuff. We don't know, but we're not going to show our cards together yet. So I do like this. I, what would be, what do you need for this? We, well, we're we talking. don't have, we don't have much so that I'm telling them we don't have much, but we do have a few things. We don't have much. Well, we're talking, you know, it's, it's a new deal. I've got, uh, I would like to have more silver, pre-1964 coins of some kind. And I guess that's a pretty nice knife. And I'd like to have at least five dimes for that of 90% silver coins. What do you think about that? Well, I do have some silver coins in my pocket because I thought that's kind of what I have. I don't want to show what I have. Um, I'm also going to try to get a lighter, so we'll see, because I need lighters. We're all going to need lighters. Oh my gosh, matches, but lighters. They're lightweight, and I can get a bunch of lights out of it. I do have a few silver coins. Mm. Do you have a, also have a lighter? I'm really in need of a lighter. We just don't... I, yeah, I, said, I... I said we. That was a mistake. I shouldn't have said we. Maybe that passed him by. I don't know. Yeah, I've got a lighter. What would you be willing to add to those dimes for the knife well, I and could, a lighter? I could give you six, six just, dimes. Just one more dime for a lighter? Yeah, well, that's, I, um, well, you're, I need the lighter. What is, what is, what's the value to you? Well, and how many lighters do you have? Let me see if I can get some info from him. Let me see how smart this guy is. So how many lighters well, do you have? The good old Bic lighter here. Yeah. And I don't care to talk about how many lighters I have. Sounds I, like he's got a lot. I'm not willing to, you know, show my hand here. She said she wanted a lighter. So I'm, I don't tell her that I have 10 more of these in the back. I'm not going to go there. But I'll tell you what. Okay. What, what, what? If you make it seven dimes, I'll give you the lighter and the knife. And they're both black. Isn't that great? <laughs> I like black. You know I do. I think that's a good deal. So. Remember, I have someone back here keeping an eye on you. So don't, don't think you're going to run away with those items. Six. That's, that's like all I have. Well, hang on just a minute. Oh, it's going to check to see if they're pre pre P64 that has 90% silver in it. See, I'll, he's counting right now. One silver dime really could buy a lighter or possibly an apple or a carrot or something to eat. You can't eat silver. So I'm happy to have get this bushcraft knife because I can open things. I can, I can start a, a fire with it. I could, you know, like, you know, weapon. Yeah, I can cut meat when I cut a rabbit, whatever. And this lighter is gonna um, get me a fire so I can cook what I 
what I, so I can eat what I kill. Well, I'm happy with this deal. I think you're willing to go uh, with these seven dimes. Okay. You can have the lighter and the knife and we're in good shape. Thank you. And I don't know if you're around in this area, but uh, in the future, but we could always trade again later. I'd be very interested to uh, stay in touch. And yes. if I need comes up, let me know and we'll see what we can do. Now, see, I can all, we can also trade information. We can also barter information and we can barter a skill. Um, making something, um, fixing uh, like a nurse, you could trade with a skill. Let me ask you, sir, what skills do you have? What if, if I needed something down the road, what skills do you have? Actually, I'm a brain surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Hope he doesn't want to get in here. He if, would be scared. If you, if you, if you, if you find yourself having a lot of headaches, I'd be happy to get in there and take a look. Would you see. be using this knife to do I it? I could. Okay. I could. Yeah. Okay. We'd clean it a little bit. Yes. First, of course. Yeah. But so. So. Well, my skills that I could I could build you something. Oh. Yes, I can build you a chair. I could build you a house. I am a carpenter and a drywaller, and I have wonderful skills for um, the trades. One thing I may be interested in in the future, okay. not today, okay. but in the future, is a small folding table. One that I could wow. sit at in yes. my uh, folding chair okay. and do whatever. Uh, that might be something we can talk about in the future. Okay. Well, you get the wood. I'll be around here probably next week. Okay. And we can talk about this. All right. That sounds I'd like good. to meet your other gal there, you know, yeah. that's uh, watching you. I didn't say it was a gal. Well, I figured you're so handsome. It would, oh. it would be a oh. girl. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> See, flirting does help when it comes to. <laughs> oh, well, anyway. Okay, right, so well, now I gotta ahead. walk that way when my guys, when Paul's over there. So I'm gonna walk that way and then he's gonna wait so it's not obvious and then he'll pick me up over there. But it got me. Well, thank you very much. Bartering is the exchange of goods or services without the use of a common thing called money, right? When we barter, this simply means that you have something in your possession that I want or need, or that I have something that you want or need also, and we can make a deal, let's make a deal. If you think back to the days when American Indians were just solely here, they would barter their animal skins and food to settlers for weapons, liquor, horses, and other products that were impossible for them to get otherwise. Barter. The word trades came from an era where people used products made by their skills and tools for making deals with others who had different sets of skills and tools. A carpenter would trade his woodworking skills like I tried to do for the goods and services of another. For instance, a carpenter might make a chair like I offered for the farmer in exchange for some eggs. Ever since the beginning of human societies, bartering or trading has been the primary way that our needs were met on this earth. You have chickens who lay eggs. I have a cow who provides raw milk. That's a good trade, good trade. Some sort of trade could have been negotiated and still can. Bartering bypasses the system of taxation and is viewed as a creative alternative for those who wish to avoid taxes on goods. Now this system of bartering bypasses digital currency, right? That's what will happen. Your government doesn't like this because they have no way to track it and get a piece of the action. They want their taxes. It's important to remember that at least some of the people who you will be bartering with, though, are going to feel desperate. Oh yeah, since desperate people do desperate things, there is always a chance that they will decide to rob you. 
either killing you to get what you have or just trying to get away with stealing it instead of trading it. You have to be ready to defend yourself at all times. So you need weapons. You should have someone else like Paul and I did with you whenever you are bartering with people, unless you know them very well. Your buddy needs to be a distance away from you, but able to see everything that is going on. Now it was kind of hard with those doors there. Their main purpose in being there is to help you defend yourself if that becomes necessary, and it very well could be. They need to make sure that they are located in a place where they, could, uh, where they can offer support without being in a position where someone can sneak up behind them and take anything that they have. It would be best if you could conduct business away from your home or vehicle, as well as away from wherever you are keeping your stockpile, if it's not at home. Often parks and squares become makeshift markets in these types of cases, giving you an ideal place to do business. But be careful returning home after you do your trading from the market because you could be followed. Check to make sure that nobody is following you to find out where you live. Very important. Don't make a big show of what you have available for trade. You're going to be much better off displaying a small amount of merchandise and acting as if that's all you have. If you have a lot, it might make you too attractive and a target for thieves. While you definitely have the advantage in the situation, be careful about pressing that advantage. Don't just flaunt it. The best barter deals are those where both parties feel as if they won. If you press your advantage too much, you may get more, but you may make an angry customer in the process. This could lead to future violence at a minimum. It will make that person try to avoid doing business with you in your future. And you do want to be able to trust people and to make deals to barter. In summary, it will be up to you to determine the value of the items that you have available for trade. That will be constantly shifting as supplies become available and then are bought up. So everything's gonna be uh, shifting. It is likely that some standards of value will arise in your community. Use them as a guideline. Remember that the food and other supplies that you have will help keep your customers alive, which gives you a high value, but only as long as it is rare. The items they have for trade may be valuable in normal times, but are not so valuable during the crisis due to their ability to help sustain life. Let's have a cup of coffee here. Cheers. Well, bartering is going to be very important for eons. Bartering has been going on. And like Paul discussed during our skit, that they're already doing bartering. He's read about this where farmers along the side of the road are trading for, um, junk, it's called junk silver, 90% silver pre-1964, 64 and um, pre, yeah. I mean, they're worth a lot of money. Gold is going up and so is silver. Now, one thing about gold and silver is, is it, it, gold and silver is meant to protect your assets. Like if you have a bunch of cash or a lot of people saying, if you've got money in the bank, you need to go put all of your money into assets, which would be gold, silver, land, whatever. But you can't eat silver and you can't eat gold, right? In the beginning, if the shit hit, this is, our skit was pre-shit hit the fan. Everything was still going. We were just trying to keep our, our trading away from the eyes of the government because digital currency, everything that we do with currency, with digital currency, it will be in view of, of prying eyes because it's going to be digital and they can look in to see where, what you're spending your money on. And, and eventually they can flip the switch on you if they don't like what they see. But bartering will go on and you can, bar you can barter bicycles, transportation, fuel. I made a list. Go back to the video from 
two days ago. And I will put the link in it in comments and I will pin it. That's going to be very important because there's a list of items that you will need and just a little bit more information about barter items that you can store. Now, some of you actually said, well, if you put, if you're a nomad and you put your barter um, items in a storage unit, they're just going to get stolen. Well, possibly they could be, but it's still a good try to get it and get it in your storage unit. And in the beginning, you can still go to your storage unit and pick things up and then take it out and go and trade with people that you that they look nice and you can trade with. So in the beginning, everything isn't going to be stolen. Not everything. It's going to, there'll be levels. It will escalate as time goes on. But in the beginning, I think it would be good to get what you need. In the very beginning, it will be all about, for some people, it'll be about their vices. They're going to need alcohol. They need a fix. They're going to need a cigarette. They're going to need a cup of coffee. Only carry just a little bit with you, right? Yeah, I think that's really important. Okay, so I will end this now. Go back and watch some of the previous videos. This is going to be the last of this series. I think we've discussed what the possibilities of what's coming up. They say that there is a coming collapse. It's inevitable. We just don't know when. Here's another thing, point I want to point out is that there were all kinds of, there were um, uh, opinions kind of all over the place. Most of you agreed that this is going on and you thanked me for making this available. But what I've noticed, one of them particularly said, well, this will not happen because the IMF will not allow these nations like Russia or China become the reserve currency because they're dictatorships. Well, that really is, an, if I thought about this, I don't think that's going to be a factor at all. What's happening is the BRICS and there's more nations that are coming together that want to join the BRICS. The Russians, the Chinese, India, and South Africa, and there's going to be more. They're already going to start trading. The IMF has no control over them. They're going to start trading with their own currency, which will probably be digital Chinese. Um, I think it's pronounced Yuan. So that's leaving us out already. And there's not going to be anything that anybody can do with it because they're going to do what they want to do. If you look at those countries, they have the most landmass, don't they? Russia, China, India, uh, Brazil, hello, <laughs> you know, yeah, they, they're, they're going to do what they want to do and nobody's going to be able to stop them. I think that's going to be plain and clear. So already then the United States is going to go start going this way, going down a little bit because we're not going to be in that trade. And then eventually what will happen is we will no longer be the reserve currency. <sighs> it's kind of inedible. We're going to have to, um, we're going to have to deal with it. I'm sorry. But we really are. There's a lot of opinions out there and nobody knows all the answers. But together, if we have this discussion, right, which is why I want to do it, um, I think it's good. Now, a couple of you said, Lee, what the heck? Get back to talking about nomad life. No, I'm sorry. Um, I will. I'll talk about nomad life, but I've said it a billion times. I'm not just a nomad. I'm an author. I'm a college graduate. My mind is always working. I want to know what's going on out there. And I think you do too. I am going to attract like-minded people that like variety, like to hear about different things. I just can't keep showing you what's in my bins all the time or saying, well, this is what I did today. I've had so many of you say, look, we're sick of seeing you going to the laundromat. We're sick of seeing you going to the park. But that's what I do. I'm a nomad, right? So we're getting ready to go up north. And so we'll, you'll be getting some different footage in the background. But I'll still be telling you about what's going on and keep you informed about our world. That does affect nomads and house dwellers. You know... There's probably 75% of my viewers live in a house. I get stats on that. You live in a house. Of course you want to know what's going on. We all do. Well, I love you guys. We got the book. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Go to minivanlee.com for products and all that good stuff. I love you guys. Till tomorrow. Bye.